So this is the second video on what to do with vacuum cleaners because I found two vacuum cleaners. Now this one's obviously a Hoover uh, and it's a bagged vacuum cleaner. The previous one was actually a um, cyclone cleaner. But they all follow pretty much the same routines actually. This head section is uh, really just a shaped bit to suck up the dust. The motor's very often in the foot of these uprights. And then this section is the actual vacuum section where the dust collection happens. So let's get this one to bits and have a look at the inside of it. So I did skip this bit actually on the other video, mostly because, you know, sometimes you get your head in the clouds, you're doing your own thing and you don't think about it. But I thought, well, actually it's really useful to see, to get a feel of how these things are. So like I say, it's all really the basic, same basic design. And I've just removed the shoe, the cleaning shoe from the bottom with its little cover plate. And I've taken off the accessory clip hoses. That's all I've done. And you see, this is the body of the vacuum cleaner. And the body of the vacuum cleaner, again, is pretty much the same design. This little circular bit here, that's the bit that houses the motor. And it's likely that that's a universal motor. This bit is that bit that houses all the vacuum -y bits for the cleaning section. But that's the motor bit there. Now, obviously, we need to undo this section of the case to have a look at that. But once we've removed that foot, and that's seriously all I've done, is unscrew and remove the foot, that body is what we actually get. So now we've removed the vacuum bits and the little cover case of the motor, we can have a close-up of the motor. So here's the motor, and yes, it's a universal motor. I mean, almost universally, universal motors are in vacuum cleaners, pun not really intended. But here is the impeller here. You see this rubber ring around there, and you've got these rubber seals sealing this whole section here as the vacuum section. So when the impeller turns on, the vacuum's drawn through here, which is the main body, obviously, where the bag is actually sitting, and then gets sucked into that impeller area there. So that is a beautiful seal for creating the vacuum draw. Now, the thing about universal motors is they'll work off alternate current or direct current equally as well. This was meant to be plugged in the wall at 230 volts, but it'll work just fine off a ordinary 12 volt battery. Now all I've done is taken the motor connections here, followed that wire up to the other end. It's just the end of the wire. There's no electronics, no switching, no, not anything there. It, this is just connected directly to this motor. And what I'm going to do is connect it to a 12 volt battery. So I put the negative to the negative, the positive to the positive. And there we go, the motor spins up rather nicely, actually. The speed control on this is going to be by voltage, but that motor is spinning beautifully. And this is the drive belt, incidentally, that drives the carpet beater. If you're unhappy with that, well, you can just throw it off. Okay, so I've got this thing in the vise and I've taken it to pieces. Let's have a look at those pieces. The first thing is the impeller cover. It's a press fit. There are some little tabs over there. Lever up the tabs and it'll be a hard job to get it off because it is a very tight press fit and you do need to be gentle with it so that you don't actually damage the impeller cover. So that's the impeller cover. And obviously this is where the air is drawn through in the vacuum cleaner. Here's the actual impeller itself, so the air is drawn through the centre. This is obviously spinning and it throws the air out to the edge. So if we take the impeller off, you can have a look at the impeller. It's a bit of pressed steel with vanes in the right direction. Obviously it was held on by a nut there to the main motor. We've got a spacing washer and then a little holding washer there, which helps to hold and centre it actually. And if we remove this plastic part, and don't lose that washer, there we go, there's the spacing washer. We see there's a bearing there which bears on the inside of this plate. This plate is fixed to the body of the motor. So the air is forced by the impeller out to the edge of the impeller cover. And then clearly these ducts are part of what directs the air. And the ducts follow around there going into the motor housing. So like most vacuum cleaners, it uses the flow of air to help cool the motor. Now, we want to use this for a gasifier, hopefully. And in order to do that, of course, we can't have the gas flowing over the motor. What we need to do is isolate it. Now, my plan is to drill some holes here in this plate so that when the 
air is, uh, the gas is forced in there, then it can only go through those holes. And obviously what we could do then is put a ceiling ring between here and these vanes here. So the air will be scooped in and then forced out the back of the um, motor here. And then we can put a ring housing on there to redirect that gas flow. So the first thing to do is to drill some holes in here and to block up those vanes so it can't go into the motor housing. So there are the modifications. I've drilled a one centimeter hole through on that ring and on the center piece I've filled it with card body filler so that when that goes back on that, then it will still scoop the air, but the air can no longer get into the motor. It has to come out of these holes here. Now, the airflow over the motor is part of the cooling system for a vacuum cleaner, but then we're going to be running this at 12, maybe 24 volts, so well underpowered. So I'm not too worried about that because it normally runs at 240 volts. So what I'm going to do is put a bit of silicon sealant around there now to make sure everything's really sealed and bolt it all back together. So in order to refit the motor and isolate these new chambers, what I've done is I've built up a flexible rubble seal there out of this stuff, which is on a roll sealant. It's a, a, I don't quite know what actually, I think it's a neoprene rubber. But I've built up a seal there, I'll press the motor home, build the seal on the other side, and then I can cut a few holes in here to make sure that this is sealed. And if it isn't sealed, I can always squirt some silicon in there to finish the sealing job. And once the motor's in place, exactly the same thing, that home built rubber seal there, and now I can put the top cover back on. Okay, so that's it back together, and if we connect it to our battery, Ta-da! So, it is working. I can feel that coming out there and I can feel it coming out there. So, it's working on 12 volts, direct uh, DC. We just connected it straight to the motor. We've isolated the in and out so that the gas can't actually go into the motor. It now just comes through that passage that we made by laying the rubber. So, if you're a bit worried about it, you can drill a couple of holes in here and here and squeeze some silicon in there. You don't want to get rid of this because this supports the other end of the motors. You have to go around there. I'm not worried about it, so I'm not going to do that. But it's equally now ready to be connected up to the gasifier. And that's what I'm going to do with it later. So what we do, obviously, is just put on the front cover with its seals. We can fill that bag with some sawdust and it will become the um, sawdust filter. And then from the exit port here, which is using this we can actually get the gas out of there and pump it through if it's not strong enough we may have to uh, increase the voltage but that's what i want to do with it and that's how you do the modification to make um, this run on direct current which is easy because it's a universal motor and a little bit of fiddling around with the seals anyway i hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching